And tonight's competition is minimalist photography. Minimalist photography is a form of photography that is distinguished by its simplicity, emphasizing lines, shape, form, and its composition. A minimalist image tells its story with as few elements as possible, capturing only what is absolutely essential. And this evening's judge is Trish Sangello. Trish is, a, Trish is a fine art and portrait photographer. She received her master's of photography from Cranbrook Academy of Art. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, she is the director of the Colorado Gallery of the Arts and has been teaching photography uh, and has studied abroad and at Arapahoe Community College. Uh, like I said, she's been teaching now for 30 years. Her courses include darkroom, digital, studio, portrait, and travel photography. Trish, did you, Trish, did you have anything that you wanted to add or impart to the membership? <laughs> and by the way, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been on Zoom teaching all day. <laughs> Here I am again. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. <laughs> no, we do our lectures in Zoom and we do that way. We just are lessening our contact. And then our dark room, of course, we're together and there's a lot of togetherness in the dark room. So um, no, not really. I mean, actually, I realized this September I've been uh, teaching at ACC and been an, an administrator um, 31 years. So um, I, it, it's a passion of mine. So I'm excited that you guys have me back. I do have a trip coming up uh, for photography. We had to push it from this summer to next summer to Berlin and Amsterdam. So if anyone might want to know more, we have um, workforce programs also, not just our uh, uh, for credits. So students can go of uh, um, all levels of photography. The nice thing is it's just completed and all you do is show up and we take care of the rest. So um, if you are interested, let me know. It's a 10 day trip in June and we're truly hoping it gets to go <laughs> and that COVID goes away. <laughs> so. tonight, tonight we're gonna have 46 images, six in the five, six category, six in F8, 15 in F11 and 19 in F16. And as we come to practice, we'll begin each category with the black and white images. And after each category is critiqued and judged, those with a score of nine or 10, I'll ask you to say a few words about the image, uh, any special techniques used or other information that might be helpful or interesting to the membership. I would ask you to keep the comments down to about 45 seconds or so. And one last reminder before Trish begins the judging is let's all be sure to uh, mute ourselves before she starts. And Trish, are you ready as soon as Bob comes back up? Yes, so I have, you know, I, I mean, I've done this before. I have the grade scale and uh, the during scale. And then um, I will say that I really am, as we look at the images, I really am thinking of what minimalist photography is about. And you did mention, Butch, in your description, the elements of art and principles of design, which really are the hub of, of what um, we use when we design any form of art, including photography. Um, but I really did like that. One of the, the thing you said that I think I stuck with when I was kind of previewing was um, at, you know, uh, as few elements as needed uh, to, you know, show what the image is about. And for me, that's really what min minimalist um, photography would fall under. So I am going to stick to that. Um, and so I, but if I feel it, a piece might not really fit that criteria, I will let you know versus during it so that you wouldn't get a lower score because we don't want that to affect your ability to move up in level. So I will, if I feel personally that it doesn't fit in that definition, I'll say something, so. That's great. That okay. relieves Cliff and I of that responsibility. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't make anybody mad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I think, make yeah, people yeah, mad yeah. all day long. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I think that, that that's great, you know, and, you know, if you can call out those, those elements that, you know, you feel really kind of disqualify it, you know, it'd certainly be helpful for yes. all of us. Yes. Okay. Um, next month's competition is hats, and that's courtesy of Allie Green. She's the one who made that suggestion. And for hats, we're going to use the following definition. Images of any type of hat, worn or unworn, from baseball caps to women's fashions to military uniforms to an Indian headdress. Anything goes in this fun category. 
all while keeping in mind that the hat must either be the focal point of the image or integral to telling the maker's intended story. Uh, and that'll be published. And uh, next month's judge will be the inimitable Cliff Lawson, one of our more esteemed members. Cliff, are you here tonight? I am here tonight. That's great. Good to see you. Um, so I don't want to see a hat on a statue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So this is Sean, uh, just to fill dead space. Next month's program on the 8th, um, we have Brenda Petrella. She runs the Outdoor Photography School Network, and she has a podcast. That's kind of where I picked up on her from. She lives in Vermont, and she's going to do a program on shooting fall colors in New England and other things Vermont associated. So that, again, is on the 8th of September. So this image fits, I think, uh, the concept of uh, minimalist um, art very much. Um, I really like the color palette. It's soft. Um, I think that the weight of the image works really well, the simplicity of the subject matter. Um, so in that respect, like I said, it really fits. I feel that um, just the overall image has um, the quality of, I actually really like this image. I'm going to give it a nine. Um, because it really does speak to me in the sense of what a minimalist image would be. Very few elements going on. I got to get in my groove. Yep, thank you. <laughs> It'll take me a second to really <laughs> gear up. <laughs> I really felt this one did too when I looked at it. I really love the composition and, and the subtle perspective on this one. Um, I like the darkness at the bottom and how it weighs the image. Um, there's really very little detail or information going on there, much more like a silhouette. And then of course we have the wires and uh, the chair kind of hanging there. And when I really think of what simple or um, the essential elements are, this one really hits the target. Uh, they're just even in the contrast level, there's so few zones going on in the image, the simplicity of the subject, not just the elements and the lines. Uh, it's lacking a lot of texture and things like that, that sometimes will draw the eye away from what simple looks like. I um, really enjoy looking at this piece. I, I would definitely give it a 10. And what was the name of this one? Running on empty? I'll just, running on I'll empty. Just, yeah, I'll just leave that up on the screen then. So, oh, yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. That's good for me. Yeah. Okay, excellent. I'm lost. <laughs> I'm lost. Yeah. Um, this one, it does fit the idea when we think of subject matter uh, of being very minimalistic, just the sense of, you know, the surrounding area, the ice. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the, the geese or goose, I'm sorry, standing there. Uh, it does have a little bit more activity going on. There's really no negative space in this one. So your eye is flowing all over and you don't always land right on the main subject matter. So for me, this one has a little bit more information going on. But the composition is very nice. And like I said, it really does have... Um, uh, a um, not very much subject going on. Um, and I do think that um, the color palette on it for me is a little bit um, soft. Uh, it, I kind of wish that maybe um, the, the dark areas were just a hint darker so that it popped a little bit more contrast on that. But I'll give this image a nine. Thank you. Sailing away. <laughs> um, again, this one here, when we talk about negative and positive space, there's so much activity going on, really, uh, unless you look at the upper section in the right where there's some quiet space for your eye to land. The rest of it pretty much is an active space. So the eye is actually quite busy when you look at this, even though the subject itself is considered minimalistic. Um, but I do like the weight of the image. I like the format of the image. I think the color palette is soothing. Uh, that is minimalistic. So in that respect, um, it helps keep it in the simple range. Um, I would give this one, 
I kind of battle with this one just a little bit, um, but I, I think about a nine would be fitting. Thank you. Lone Sentinel. <laughs> I'm seeing sort of this repetition when I was looking at the imagery of like that one object just sitting there um, and then sort of a stark surrounding. So here we, it is again, um, but this one does have a little bit more negative space in it. So the eye can land and have a quiet place. And I do think of that um, very much as being simple and minimalistic. Um, I really like the balance. I like the composition. I like the color. I think that the complementary colors work really well um, between the sky and the, gr um, the grass. I would give this one, and I like the format a lot. I think it really uh, works well, um, creating a more, um, you know, um, unsymmetrical image, which I actually really enjoy looking at. I would give it a 10. Since we're bouncing around, I need to ask um, a question here. The um, I think I'm just going to stop every now and then at the nines and tens, if that's okay with everybody, to give people a chance to talk about it. So, um, Cliff, if you're okay with that, yeah, I yeah, we'll no, do a no, couple I think more, and then if we get some nines and tens, I'll let people comment because our first four images were all um, in one category, and this last, these last two are in a different category. So, anyway, Trish, why don't you go ahead with this one? Okay. Um, this particular one I find very pleasing to look at. I really like the simplicity of it. Um, it has such a dreamlike quality. I love the high horizon line, but that it bleeds down into the water and the reflection is so beautiful. Uh, I really like the lack of subject, which might sound like a negative thing, but it's actually a positive thing. Um, I like the balance of it, the format of it looks really well, the softness of the color, the green is not competing with the blue very much. I mean, I mean, those are all those things I find very pleasing. I would give this one a 10 for sure. Thank you. Why don't we do uh, two more and then we can uh, have people talk about their edges. So let's do two more. Seekers of the Minimal. Great. Very fitting uh, title for this show, I was thinking. <laughs> um, I, uh, I like the balance of the image. I really like the way it's weighted. I enjoy seeing what's actually occurring. You can kind of get a sense of it. Um, I think that it is a little hazy. It is hazy. Of course, it's hazy naturally. But in some ways, I wish I could have a little more contrast. So I would like to have seen a little more highlights popping out. Uh, I think it just would have given some more visual depth. When you, when I look at the image, it feels very flat to me. And I always think that when I look at a two-dimensional image like photography, I want it to have the illusion of depth, uh, just as if we were looking at a three-dimensional object that's in the round. And so I always try to create that illusion and contrast is one of the ways we do that. So um, that would be the only thing I would like to have seen maybe occur in this in a few of the areas, just a little bit more highlights. Um, I will give this one, uh, because of that, I'm going to give it an eight. Okay, let's do one more. Great. Okay. Um, can I get rid of that? No, I can't. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see here again, very simple subject, uh, nice, nice, uh, sort of thirds going on here with the horizon line and then in the foreground, mid ground and background, the color is really nice. Um, it is flat again for me. Um, sometimes that does happen when we're shooting work that has the element of a silhouette, but still retaining some information. So you kind of get the pull between those two. Uh, so that is something that I was thinking about. I do appreciate that the very bottom is fully black and we don't have bits of detail because that becomes a little confusing when we're trying to decide if it's meant to be a silhouette or not. So, um, but I will give this one, uh, I will also give this one an eight. Again, I would like to have seen a little bit more depth in the image, not so flat. Okay, thank you. We have one, two, three. You know, we have six right now that are nines or tens. Why don't we do two more? And then we'll have the, the, the artist speak. So if we could do two more. Forgotten lock, forgotten love. Are we good? Okay. 
Okay, um, this one again falls into similar to uh, the, the chair that we saw earlier, the, the lack of texture in the print allowing a lot more negative space to sort of reside over the image and that our eye really is only looking at a few things. So in this case, of course we have the lock, it's nice and dark on the bottom. So it feels like that, that contrast is right. Then we have a little texture but then the eye is flowing through the line pattern. And that's really the only thing that's controlling the way our eye flows. And because of that simplicity, I find it actually quite soothing to look at. I love the contrast on it. I like the vignetting on the edges just a little bit, just to force the eye in. Uh, I like the subject matter and the way it's documented, I think looks beautiful. And the composition really fills the space nicely. I would give this one a 10. Hey, thank you. Let's do one more. Okay. Ripple. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice composition. It, it's a very, um, the eye really only can go in one place because there is so little other information going on short of the water and then all the little bits of the water that we're seeing moving throughout the image. There is a little bit of activity going on with that, so it gives the illusion of fluttering. Uh, it, um, it's kind of whimsical and I, but I am kind of just locking in on that one subject and my eyes not really moving too much, uh, but it does flow nicely going down. It has a nice gradation going on. Uh, I would give this one a nine. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, um, Carl, can you, uh, put up the uh, nines and tens? Okay, our first one is Misty Morning, and that's um, Allie Green. Allie, are you with us tonight? No, she's not. Okay. And this is also one of Allie's, running on empty, and for this she got a 10. So she got a nine and a 10, that is just outstanding. Um, too bad that she's not here to take a bow. All right, Carol, you want to give us her next one? I am, I'm lost. And this one is Bill Dixon's. Is Bill with us tonight? Nope. Okay. Uh, Carl, the next one. Sailing away. It's also Bill Dixon. Yeah, yeah. This is also Bill's, and he is not here. So, um, onward. Lone Sentinel is mine. Um, it was taken on the. It was taken out on the Serengeti, and believe me, or to believe it, sometimes you'll see ten thousand wildebeest, and sometimes you won't find a squirrel. This was the latter. So nothing special about it, but I happen to like this in its in this particular. Uh, um, Panel format. This one is also mine. And uh, this is the, I, I submitted something similar to this a couple of years ago, but I did it in, in really bright colors. And I wanted to catch the same or a similar image on an overcast day. What I did is I used uh, I don't know, to the big stopper and the little stopper. So I think I had to stop this down. I don't know how, how many stops and it was a long exposure. Um, and what it is, it's the remnants of a bridge that's left over from Hurricane Katrina. And I wanted to smooth out the water. And I think it was probably about uh, a 45 second exposure, if I recall. So taken down in Mississippi. Forgotten lock, forgotten love. Now, whose is this? That's, that's yeah. me. It's, yeah. So it's a this is just a lock I saw on a fence on a railroad bridge up in Idaho this summer and just I don't know I like I actually like the pattern of the the fence you know the wire on the fence and um really just converted it to black and white with silver effects pro and that's about all I did with it nice shot ripple this one's also mine um yeah, so I really wanted to get, you know, a rock in the water. This is in the wilds of Chatfield Reservoir. 
um, on a foggy morning and there was no foggy morning. So I actually made the fog with a graduated filter in, in Lightroom. So kind of cheated there, but um, that's, that's about it for that. Hey, thank you, Cliff. Um, is so that it, Carl? I think that was yes, all of them, yeah. Can I say something while you have them all up on the screen? I think one of the things I notice when I look at these, when we think of minimalist art, is that, you know, there's always one main subject usually, but the way it's positioned, because one subject can be kind of boring to look at. It may not hold one's attention. It may not have the ability to um, truly fill the space, but it's not about that. It's actually taking that one simple subject and um, composing it in a way that draws attention to it. So if you look at all of these, they're very weighted, right? We're not sent, you'll see people aren't really centering things. Um, the tree, um, your tree there is way off to the left. And I think that's what makes these, um, so interesting, although there's so little information provided when we look at the subject matter. And these are really good examples, I think, of what that, uh, what minimalistic art represents. Thank you, Trish. Thank you. Uh, okay, Carl, you ready? <laughs> Hello, Dolly. <laughs> Great play of color. It feels a little bit by looking at the clouds because the clouds still have, um, uh, the blue is still on the clouds. There's not a, a whole bunch of white on there. So you can see there's some um, adjusting of colors, which isn't a negative thing. It's just an observation, but it does play really well against the sign. So uh, the color between the two really makes it pop. Um, if either of those were uh, a little bit duller, the image may not draw your attention as much. And I appreciate the composition. And I actually really like the wire that's coming off. You know, sometimes we battle with what should stay in, what should be removed, um, depending on if you're a purist or not. Uh, but for me, it actually just adds a little bit more nostalgia to it. It helps the eye flow. It makes it more realistic and not so perfectionist. So in that respect, I really like it. Um, I do wish the clouds had a hint more white in it. I feel like we, we forgot to bring draw out those highlights when we were possibly adjusting some of the blue on there, the saturation. Um, but I'm going to give this one a 10. Excellent. Mm. Sand dune grace. Yeah, beautiful contrast. Uh, I really like that the dark is dark. It allows your eye to rest. That dark black really allows the shape to pop. It helps contour. It contrasts nicely when you look <laughs> depressed and you see that bright highlight popping along that edge. A uh, nice, nice job of still retaining some detail without making it look washed out. Sometimes when we have a true black and we want some details, when we lighten it, we start to thin the image, almost like you're thinning a negative. Um, but we still have really nice texture coming down. It feels so three-dimensional, like I was talking about that illusion and often contrast is one of the ways we can control it. And then that hint of texture and the little bits of the grasses and stuff popping up, the way the eye flows. I love this image, it's a 10. Thank you. Dancer in a flower. <laughs> this is one of those kind of images where you just lock in and it's partially because of the shape of it. Um, your eye goes and it bounces right back in. So the eye never really fully wants to go to the outside ed edges of the print. And that can be intentional or not, um, has beautiful contrast. The print quality is beautiful. We have a full zone system in here. We have nice highlights, rich blacks, and then all the grayscale in between. Um, it's such a nice abstract image. I mean, I know that it's of um, a floor, it's a floral image, but it just the contrast of it and going in black and white really does help with that abstraction. Um, I do find my eye skirts around a little bit more because it's actually more busy, even though it's a simple subject, my eye is a little bit more busy in this image. It's not quite as subtle, um, but I will say the print quality is, is gorgeous. I'm going to give it a 10. Thank you. Pistachios on a branch. <laughs> 
didn't know they look like that when they're growing. So that was kind of interesting for me. Um, again, I think the print contrast is, is really exquisite here. I mean, the black is beautiful. I, there is nothing better than a true, true black with a beautiful highlight that still retains just enough texture to give it shape. Nothing is more distracting than a, than a true white that flattens the subject. So I do really appreciate that three-dimensional quality I keep uh, bringing up. I love just the simple subject. I love the way it contours, the shape, the way it fills the, 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 um, the frame, uh, the way it's twisting, it's beautifully done. It's nice and sharp, which I think in this, in this situation is, is important. Uh, I would give it a 10. Thank you. Building boom in Nashville. <laughs> this is an eye catcher, isn't it? <laughs> you talk about day glow. Um, the color is wonderful. And I love sometimes when you're out documenting and a moment happens that you, it catches your eye. I mean, if you look at the green, yellowish green, and then you look at his vest and they're the same, then you look at his shirt and then you look on both sides of him. We have matching color there as well. And it's just one of those moments where you have to grab your camera because it's all so perfectly aligned for you. Um, you know, um, so I really appreciate it. I like the scale of everything around the main subject. It is kind of busy when you look at the USG symbol everywhere, but the subject itself. So I'm looking at that like it's texture. And what I'm really looking at are these big bold shapes that are dividing this image into three across the top and one across the bottom. And I think the eye flows really nicely. It's nice to have those horizontal lines crossing because some of those vertical lines could shoot your eye right off the print, but those horizontal lines are forcing the eye to come back to the center. So we stay in the imagery. Um, I just love the coincidence, but I love how um, although it's a moment that was just happening and you have to be quick, it's very well composed. Um, so it's very mindful and thoughtful in such a quick moment that probably was occurring. I will give it a 10. Let's do two more and then we'll have the, uh, the artist speak. Hiker at the Dunes. <coughs> I feel like I'm looking at a moon picture for some reason. Maybe it's just because you start to get this sense. It's very well done in the sense that the eye starts to wrap around the dune. Um, and then you're looking at this far off uh, part of uh, the background and it's floating off and it looks like it goes off into space. So uh, it, it's, it's interesting that sort of illusion that is occurring. The texture is beautiful, especially on the bottom. You really retain that rippling effect that happens when sand is being beaten by the wind. Um, and then the lifting of the sand is also so nicely done. I really enjoy seeing the shadow come down, the angle of the light. It's, it's beautiful how it's being caught on the edge of the, um, the dune and you see that highlight there and then the strips of highlight. Uh, it's it's a really well done image, and I also like the highlights on the person, so you get a sense of their figure because they are, although they are darker than the background, and there's a slight color difference. Um, they could have gotten lost at least on a quick glance, and so uh, with more investigation and looking at it, that those highlights really do help. So um, I'm going to give this one a ten. I must be in a good mood today, people. <laughs> Okay, Carol, you want to uh, you want to put those up, and then people can take a bow. Can do, can do. Let's get back to here. Hello, Dolly. I can't find it. Hi, this is Dave Hull. This is my Dave my Hull. my image. Um, took this a number of years ago. I thank you very much, Trish, for your comments. I I do now that I look at it. I I do need. So, so thanks. I appreciate that. This is basically along Colorado Boulevard, um, south of Evans, north of Yale. Uh, hope it's still there. It's always been one of my favorite signs in Denver, and that's about it. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Nice job, Dave. Sand Dune Grace, and uh, I think that's yours as well, isn't it? It is correct. I was down in the sand dunes, one of my favorite places in Colorado. I was down there in June and um, just kind of was very, very you know, late in the day. 
with the deep shadows. And so I just kind of, you know, happened upon this and I did, as Trish pointed out, I just liked the graceful curve of the top of the dunes and the grasses. And I started off in black in color and it just didn't work. So I, I converted it to black and white and, and worked much better. That's all, thanks. Good shot, good shot. Dancer in a flower. Danny Lamb. Yeah, Danny, okay, got it. Yeah, uh, that picture, the orchid picture was taken at home um, using a macro extension tube. Um, are you a Silver Express Pro to convert it back and white? Okay. okay. Pistachios on a branch. This is also Danny. Yeah, this picture also uh, taken at home. Um, this one was taken with a macro lens. Oh, not very, very good. Hey, hey Danny, what'd you, what'd you use for a background there? Just curious. Yeah, this is just a, um, it's just a piece of cloth. Oh, nice shot. Very, 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 very nice shot. Um, building boom in Nashville. Yeah, Gwen Patton. Is Gwen here? Okay. Uh, hiker in the dunes, that's also Gwen's. So Gwen is not here. Very, very nice shot. Next, Carl. Oh, that's it. Okay. Let's keep moving along. Morning commute. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, my dog heard someone else's dog bark on the computer. <laughs> He's like thinking it's here. Um, I'm sorry. Hey, um, and I'm by myself, so I apologize. Um, okay, so with this image here, again, simplicity, definitely very simple. Uh, the color palette is very soft. I do feel like um, my eye just locks in on, on the bird. So in that respect, I feel like I want a little bit more eye flow when I'm looking at it. Granted, it's a sky soft clouds, there isn't other subject matter to be relying on, but the color is nice. The texture of the upper clouds are good. They sort of fill the composition a little bit for you. So at least on a diagonal, half that print has some activity going, uh, but it, it just still looks a little bit flat to me. So I'm gonna give this one, I, I'm gonna give this one, my eyes just not dancing around as much. I think I'm gonna give this one an eight. Okay, thank you. Next image, mystical morning. Mm, lovely. Uh, really like the way the color is um, fading down, the hint of the background, the silhouette of the tree and the shrubs, uh, the softness of the ground bleeding up into the, um, into the subject. I like the vertical format also. I think it plays nicely in the subject. I will give this one a, a 10, a, a really pleasing to the eye. Thank you, Trish. Mm. Contortionist leak. <laughs> uh, very fun. It's kind of fun to see some of these images more of a still life setting. Um, it gives you a chance to have a little more control over what you're doing and playing with the light and the subject matter, the background, the shadow in this case, things of that nature. I really do like the flow of it. The color is beautiful. Uh, it's very well lit. It is still very simple. Uh, there's so little subject yet. You get so much flow from that uh, plant as well as the background. Um, I would actually give this one a 10. Trish? Yes. Oh, yes. Hangers. I giggled when I saw this one the first time. I really like um, sometimes we have to create our own imagery. It's not always out there just beckoning for us to come and photograph or we might not wander past it, it's there. I liked that someone took 
something as mundane as this um, drying air rack and these simple uh, hangers. I love that everything is white except for, of course, you know, the metal portions and the shadowing that's occurring. And you get this white gray, very monochromatic image. I think it's very playful, very clever. And I think it's really well thought out and the composition is really fun. I really like how the eye travels down, very controlled. Uh, I would give this one a 10. Thank you. A cornfield. Mm, lovely. The first thing I noticed with this one is it feels very soft. And when I say that, I'm trying to be polite, but I'm really saying out of focus. Um, my, I just, am, I know that the foreground could be soft focus and, you know, it, because it's close, but as I'm traveling in and I'm starting to look at the cornfield itself, it still feels a little bit out of focus. Um, I do like the division of color from the blue to the green to the, to the goldy yellow. Um, in that respect, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, if I look at it vertically, um, it's even more fun to look at the way those lines move, but I am distracted by the focus. And so for this one, I'm gonna give it a seven. Okay, thank you. One more. Serenity. Serenity. I kind of feel the same with this one. For me, the focus just seems a little bit off. Even when I land on the, the uh, sailboat, um, it still feels a little bit lost in there. Um, I need a little bit more sharpness. It also looks like the boat wasn't part of the original image. I'm sure it is, but it, it kind of feels like we've merged some imagery, and, um, which means there's just that softness that's going on, some blending and things like that. I wish the composition was just a little bit different. Having a simple subject like this, when we put the main subject smack in the center, it's like a deer in headlights and you lock in and your eye doesn't have a chance to really move around. And it feels just a little too simplistic for me in terms of composition. I'm gonna give this one a seven. Thank you, Trish. Our next image, blew it up. <laughs> Uh, really like the line quality on this one. I like the division of the image. I think the square format is nice. I, I like how we're thinking about um, having, um, you know, most of the image only on one portion um, on that angle there. I like the lines, the white lines. And then, of course, I like how um, the, I'm going to call it a rope, par, pardon me if I'm wrong, um, hanging down because, again, it breaks up that eye flow a little bit so the eye doesn't totally shoot off the image that you you have that to sort of counterbalance it. I like the blue scale that's going on. It, again, it has sort of a monochromatic look to it, even though it has a few darker areas, but the color palette is very soothing to the eye. I really like that composition. I'm gonna give this one a 10. Thank you, Trish. Moonrise over the city. Uh, the format is nice. I, I think the composition plays well with the format. Uh, it's not grabbing my attention as much in the sense that I want a little bit more. I do appreciate the way the lights are um, sort of projecting out and hovering. They've got that sort of motion look to them. The color varies from each one going through the eye does flow straight through the image so I mean there is that but I do feel like a little bit in this case lack of subject isn't working for me quite as much um, I'm not sure if it needed more of them or a hint of what's going on aside from the lights themselves uh, but I will say the black is really well done. It's a nice rich black. It's not looking thin or faded. So I appreciate that. I'm going to give this one an eight. Let's do two more and then we will, um, you know what, let's go ahead and do it now. Um, but why don't we go ahead and if you could run those, Carl. And the uh, nines and tens can comment about their images. 
Okay. Mystical morning. Mystical morning. Gary Witt. Is Gary yeah, with us? Yeah, Gary Witt, yeah. Is Gary with us? No. Okay. Lovely image. Lovely image. Uh, contortionist leak. Yep. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> This, this was taken in my backyard. My wife does gardening. It was a few years ago. And there's this leaf that's just growing up and turned up like that. So I put a, a card behind it so that the shadow, you know, of the leaf went onto the card and, uh, and took this picture. Very creative. And hangers. That's Joe, also Joe my, Benito. Got the honors. Yeah, this was taken in a hotel in Iceland. Uh, and, you know, I, the walls were white. Uh, you know, the, the thing is white. <laughs> this is, it, it's a black and white, but it really is black and white. And the, uh, 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 I, I saw the hangers and they weren't just all hanging on their own little hooks. So I hooked them onto each other and, you know, to make it more interesting. Very interesting. Nice job with that, Jim. Thank you. Blew it up. Um, I've, like, like some people here, um, minimalist, just that's not the thing I do. I had to go digging to find something that was suitable. Um, this was actually from 2007, the Rocky Mountain Balloon Festival over at uh, Chatfield. Um, but yeah, it, it, just, it just struck me just as I was walking by they were blowing up this balloon and I had taken shots of full balloons and a bunch in the sky and whatever. And, but I just snapped this real quick. Um, I only, only took two frames of it. I just, I just love the lines. I love the contrast. I loved everything about it. Um, so that was it. Nice image, Carl. Very nice image. Thank you. We have a, we have any more? I think there, there was one more there, that building boom in Nashville, um, Gwen Patton. Yeah, that was Gwen's. Is Gwen on? No. I don't think she okay. is. Okay. That's okay. Thing. So um, we can continue. Morning stroll. Great. I, um, of course, when I first saw this, the first thing that popped was the contrast and the color. Uh, I, I think that it played up really nicely. This is one of those images where it could look really beautiful in black and white, but the point of it was the red against everything else and how it pops in the image. And um, color is very controlling. It's the first thing we look at psychologically, we respond to color. Um, so, uh, it, so it did. I, I really like the composition. I like the flow. I think the perspective on it is really nice. Um, it is a little more busy in terms of the background, you know, the trees provide a lot of texture. So your eye dances around a little bit more. But when we think of what a main subject is, it is very simplistic in that sense, being that the main uh, subject is the runner. Um, I, I think it plays out very nicely. I would give this one a 10. Thank you. Great. Galadrius, did I pronounce that? Uh, I think that the format on this one works well. I'm thinking about when I've been looking at some of these sim uh, single subject images and um, not a lot of information around them. And sometimes when they're in their traditional format, whether they be vertical or horizontal, we are left with a lot of empty space, a lot of dead space, a lot of negative space where the eye doesn't really have an opportunity to land for a moment. Uh, the square format works really well because what it does is it sort of eliminates some of that excess part of the image that's not really uh, doing anything for the main subject. So the square format actually works good for me in that respect. I think that the main subject looks great. I actually like the shadowing, uh, the reflection, pardon me, of it um, underneath. Um, I like seeing the water coming off of, of the feet. Um, and I like to see the foreground, midground, and background going through a transition of different focal uh, excuse me, uh, different sharp and you know, sharpening. So we have the foreground out of focus, then it starts to go in focus. And then of course it fades back out and the color palette is very nice and subtle, but yet has nice contrast. Um, so I'm gonna give this one, I think I'm gonna give this one a nine. 
Thank you. Red, white, and black. <laughs> nice title. Uh, this one really, I, I really enjoy looking at this one. I like texture. I find texture really provides me with an opportunity to move through the image uh, more effectively when I look at it. I love the way the brick is horizontal, then the wood is vertical. Of course, we have the black line and then the more organic, you know, uh, round shape at the bottom with some lines coming up it. So, and I like the way it's balanced. I think if there was more of um, the object at the bottom popping up into the image, it actually might've become distracting, but it's just enough to sort of play and tease our eyes a little bit. And I really like the color usage. The red isn't too bold because it's limited. Uh, the white is nice and subtle to look at. I, I really enjoy this composition and I like it in a vertical format. Uh, I'm gonna give this one a 10. Excellent, thank you, Trish. Um, let's do a few more. Dreamy petals. Dreamy petals. The color is very soft. And it's very, uh, very nice. And, you know, it has sort of a washed out feel, very much like a watercolor to some extent. Uh, I like the color and how it transitions. It go, you know, from the uh, pinks through the oranges to the yellow. So in that respect, I do wish I had something, just a hint more focus somewhere for my eye to land and just have that moment uh, of, of um, rest. It, it's there, but it's super subtle. I do like the composition a lot. I like the weight of it. Um, and I like how everything stems out, no pun intended, from the central area and, and how these little peaks of white are coming out uh, to give you some shape. So it's almost like the color is providing uh, the shape versus the actual subject itself. Um, I'm gonna give this one, and I think the square format is nice for this as well. I'm gonna give this one, uh, ooh, uh, I think I'm gonna give this one a nine. Okay, uh, Fiery Aspen. Great color, very intense, simple subject. Lots of texture. It looks like it was created and not photographed. It kind of makes me feel like I'm looking at a silk screen print, um, a little bit more on the printmaking aspect. It feels like it was built in the computer versus being photographed. You can see some of the line repetition repeating itself. So I'm not, I'm not sure if it's just been kind of cut and paste in there from the original image, but I do like its abstract quality quite a bit. Um, I'm gonna give this one, I actually wanna give this one a nine. Okay, thank you. Mm. Junction. I really like this image. It, it falls in that spectrum of the contrast of it and the purity of the grayscale, really having that full zone system, having that really rich, rich black to define the shape of that, that seam there and hints of it in the cracking of, of the surface and then having those highlights surrounding it um, and meeting up against it. As I've talked about before, when a, a beautiful highlight touches a true black that that's really a spectacular moment I think when we look at it and it is also one of those things that truly creates visual depth that three-dimensional quality in a flat subject so I, I really and I like the composition a lot I like the way it's weighted and I like that it's playing on a horizontal format but part of the subject is vertical so I would give this one a 10. Thank you Serenity. Much like the one right before it, it's all the same when we talk about contrast and we talk about the zone system. When we look at black and white, we wanna see the richness of the black. We wanna see the highlight have a crisp white, but yet retain texture so it looks three-dimensional. The translucent quality of the petals are beautiful. The petal to the, to the right where it folds down and you see the light kind of coming up over it, yet you have a nice black tip on there. 
just the texture and the veining, the composition looks beautiful with the format. Uh, I would give this one a 10. Thank you. How, how many more images do we have, uh, Carol? Um, looks like about 15. 15 more? Okay. Yeah. Why don't we do two more and then we'll let the, uh, the uh, photographers. Very good. The Great Salt mm, Lake. Great. Uh, I like this perspective. I think it's it's a nice, um, it has some interesting depth to it in the way the perspective moves into the subject matter. Uh, the horizon line, I do feel that that sky is um, a little bit empty at the top. So um, I kind of wish the horizon line might have, hold on one second. I hope you didn't hear me yelling. <laughs> <laughs> my kids. Um, I am going to say when we look at the shadows in this image, so if you look at where the brush meets the ground and it looks like a faded out dark green, that really should be darker. It looks like we lightened it and it created a thin area of shadow. So for me, that's a little distracting. And it also prevents the eye to flow into the image because you're not getting that full contrast from the highlights to the shadows. For this one, that's very distracting for me. I'm going to give this one an eight. Poisoned apple. <laughs> uh, um, the composition is fun. I think the color saturation is nice. Uh, the clever idea, uh, like I had mentioned earlier, it's kind of fun to see how people take some of these concepts in a more studio type of setting, even if we just create our own situation indoor or out. I do wish there were no flakes on the fabric. To me, it just looks like we forgot to um, clean it. You know, uh, you know, the lint roller needed to be pulled out. If it was intentional, I apologize, but for me, it actually looks like it was forgotten uh, because those aren't little pieces of apple. They just look like lint. And so that's distracting. I do think though, having the little bits of highlight, which in this case look blue come through, really do help it look like it's not a floating apple. It's sitting on a surface and you can see the fabric. And in that respect, I think that works well. I'm gonna give this one an eight. Mm -hmm. Let's do, uh, let's do one more and then we'll have them speak. Rising waters. The water looks great. I really, really like the, the level of texture that's going on. The gradation that's that, you know, from top to bottom. I like the reflection. I think that's really fun. It kind of looks like one of those ink prints when, when they're, you go to the psychiatrist and you get, and you have to tell them what it looks like. And that's kind of what it makes me feel like when I'm looking at it. And I think it works well in a, in a horizontal format. Uh, I do wonder though, if what would have normally have been white, it has a hint of yellow. So maybe that was from the changing of the light. Um, I kind of wish that might have had a little more contrast in it because it does flatten the image just a hair. Uh, but I'm going to give this one, I'm going to give this one a nine. Okay. Carl, why don't we take a break and let's uh, run down those images that scored nines and tens and have the people take a bow. Okay, morning stroll. That's Lucius, oh. Lucius Ashby. Okay, got it. This, this was just one morning after it, it snowed most of the night, went, went over to Highland Canal, and this guy was, was running along the canal and snapped a picture of him. All right, thanks, Lucius. Glad Glad this, yes. this is Laura Blake. Mm, this one was taken at uh, the Arsenal, Rocky Mountain Arsenal, and this um, egret, male egret, was in display, and he was chasing everybody. It was a really fun, about two hours of watching these birds chase, and he was after every female in the place, jumping, flying. It was a beautiful day. It's a nice shot, Laura. Sort of. This is... Um, 
This is also Laura, yeah. Old Gaylord Street, early in the morning. It's just two buildings that were, um, it's one building actually up against it and I just saw it. And it was very early, it was about 6.30, so it was sort of grayish. It came out, I liked it a lot. Again, very nice shot. Dreamy Petals, whose is this? It's Nancy Meyer. Uh, I, this was during one of the uh, years, well, springs, I guess, that the Botanic Gardens has a display of, of orchids. And I like orchids a lot, but I kind of got burned out uh, on that trip with photographing the front side. So I thought, well, I wonder what the back side looks like. And it was such a pale color that I tried to emphasize that and make it look uh, dreamy. And it was, uh, was a little bit out of focus uh, anyway, but I liked it that way. I think it looks very dreamy. Yeah. Thanks, Nancy. And this is also Nancy. Okay, this this picture is is not strictly speaking out of focus. Each individual exposure is in focus, but there's about fifteen of them. This is ours. Is ours here? He does. He does have comments here, so I'll read that. Um, he says, this is a crack in the roadway outside the terminal building at the Sao Paulo airport in Brazil. The crack is filled with caulking material, but doesn't look like a permanent fix. I like the simplicity of the subject matter. And I, I have to tell you, I can just picture Oz in Brazil, this exotic country, and working on taking pictures of the concrete or the asphalt outside the airport. <laughs> just funny. God bless him. Yeah. And this is also Oz Serenity said, this backlit lily was at the Denver Botanic Gardens taken this summer with a 105 millimeter lens on a subframe camera. The longer focal length allowed me to pick a dark background thereby eliminating any distracting backgrounds. I felt that the shapes, lines and textures were best suited to a monochrome image. Rising Waters, this is Ron Scheller. Uh, yes, this uh, was just taken in a, a a pond and uh, it was actually kind of mid afternoon. So that may account for some of that uh, yellowish uh, look. And it was also, I, I put a, a slight vignette and that maybe enhanced that a little bit, but otherwise I just uh, played with the, uh, the color and the contrast. Nice image. Okay, sun worshipers. All right, thank you. Uh, for this image, I kind of felt controlled. When I looked at it, the, the way it's laid out and the way it's composed, everything is so perfectly symmetrical that my eye just kind of gets locked in. Um, I do like the grayscale that's going on in it. I think the silhouetting and the darkness of uh, the plant uh, versus the emptiness in the background. And then of course the, the um, the round white shape. But I think that it, that's what's distracted to me is that I feel like I wanted to have a little bit more depth. It just looks like a round shape. It doesn't look like it's a sun or a moon, a uh, sun, anything like that. Uh, maybe in color, it might have looked a little bit differently. Um, the square format's kind of nice. So I do think that it helps with this particular subject matter. I would give this one an eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of the ridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does have a nice flow. I like seeing the texture along uh, the line here as we look at it swoop around and we can see the footprints coming up. It adds a nice little uh, kind of um, dotted line instead of a perfect edge. Uh, it, so that's kind of nice there. And I, I like the gradation of how the sand is, is flowing and has uh, a little, it helps with the shape of it a little bit. The, the, the way it's photographed is a little predictable to me. I wonder um, if maybe if we were to alter the contrast a little up some of the dark areas a little more on the bottom that uh, the shape might have popped a little bit more. So it feels a little thin it, that it could have used a little bit more depth in there. So I'm gonna give this one a nine. Thank you. Uh -huh. 
the quest for water. What a fun shot. Um, it's so hard to tell what I'm looking at when it comes to um, what possible critters we have here, but I do really like the flow of the line and how organic it looks. And I like how it's weighted. It's not perfectly down the center, it's off to the right. It has some nice soft coloring in it. It's still pretty monochromatic. Uh, it's very abstract and I, I really appreciate that. I'm gonna give it a 10. Bug. <laughs> As simple as it is, and as little information as we're given, I really, really like this composition. I really appreciate um, with as little information that's provided, uh, it still fills the, the frame really well. It works great in a vertical format. I love the texture on the tire. I love seeing all the texture of the aging that's going on and sort of the different color variances that you see a great highlight across the top. I like seeing uh, the how dark the circle part of it is where the light would go. And I do love that little crescent shape there. I, I would give this one a 10. Playground. Really nice contrast. So that's the first thing I notice is the contrast on it. It has such a metallic look. Um, that's sometimes hard to do in black and white photography. I think especially when we're working in a digital format, um, you really have to rely on a good quality paper and you really have to be good behind the uh, computer as well to ensure that you're getting that. I love the shape. I like how it fills the frame. The square format works beautiful. The shadow looks great. And it really does allow the image to be even more interesting. If you took away that shadow, you would only be looking at um, the main subject. But by having that shadow with the circles in the, and the, the, the line that's looping around really just adds that extra element. I'd give it a 10. Thank you. Circular. This really is the epitome of minimalistic. I think that it's beautifully done. It's so simple. The circle works fabulous in a square format. I love how bits and pieces of it are either in the light or in the shade. And um, that highlight is beautiful, yet it still retains texture. So it never flattens. It always feels three-dimensional. And I just, I really like how they've captured um, the shadow on this subject. I'd give it a 10. Thank you. Untitled, unnumbered, okay. It's actually just untitled. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> untitled. Uh, I feel the same way about this one. I really like this abstract, the abstract quality of this. Um, I really like the, the backgrounds. It almost has like a patina to it and all the texture and line quality and aging is actually so beautiful. And then um, having a nice deep black in the center is super helpful because it gives you that depth in there and then having the, the main object inside of that. I am happy it's off center. I think that it helps us from feeling locked in. So there's a little play with how everything is slightly shifted. I mean, you even have this line quality that starts in the middle of the right side. And if you look at it, it shoots through the black, but then it reappears um, at an angle um, off into the left side. So uh, as you back away, you can see that a little bit more. And so there's a lot going on in something that's so simple and it's a beautiful composition and works beautiful in a square format. I would give this a 10. Okay, bolts and bands. <laughs> bolts and bands, really nice play of line quality and texture. It really flows nicely. It fills the frame very nicely. Um, has some really great detail in it and uh, the contrast looks nice. And, I let, and I'm really happy that you can see it go from light to dark from side to side because it really does give that three dimensional quality. I'd actually give this one a 10. Afterglow. I like the composition, the horizontal line. I like it up there. I like that the color 
is helping keep the eye flowing. So even though there's not a lot of subject matter below the dark areas in the sun, uh, across where the where the, the land is, um, the color continues on with the subject matter. Um, I know it's meant to be soft focus. So uh, I feel like in this case, I really can see that intentional, um, the way or that it is intentional. I, I like the way the yellow is peeking through the sky. I think it's actually quite nice. It does though feel a little bit like the foreground is also out of focus. It's got soft focus and I, feel like something needs to be a hint more sharp. Something is missing on that for me. Um, so I'm gonna give this one a nine. Hmm. Handle with care. It's beautiful. I, I think that taking something uh, so simple and making it look so elegant and the contrast and the crispness and the color, the way that the color has been used on it works so beautifully. It has such a still life look to it, even though it's shot probably on site. Uh, the highlights on the top part of it look great, the whites and then how it's grayed out and we start to see, it, it appears to me that there was some color manipulation just because the edges of it are green and they kind of bleed into the background. But I really do like the, kind of this watercolor look in the background. I think that's beautiful. The composition is nice. I'd give it a 10. Leave me alone. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Um, the format is nice. Uh, I, I do feel like it's not as interesting of a subject matter uh, the person being the main subject, there's, uh, it is simple. It, so I get that part of it, but it's just not as enticing as a subject when I look at it. Um, and some of the bits and pieces of the stuff on the ground uh, for me are a little bit distracting. The shoe, there's something about the shoe that's been catching my eye as well. Uh, but I would probably give this one an eight. my favorite flower. <laughs> the color is nice. Um, and it totally feels like the intention here is the use of the lens uh, and, and capturing a hard subject, obviously. Uh, it does, if you look at the flower on the far right side, the bottom flower, and you look at the purple petal that's coming in over the yellow, it has kind of like a cut and paste feel to it. So for me, I'm not sure if it's oversaturated or it just kind of, it, 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 it looks layered in a way that doesn't look natural to me. Um, and because of that, it's, it's a little distracting. The butterfly looks really good though. And it is a simple subject. Uh, it's very bright in color, which is not simple subject, but um, I would, I'm gonna give this one an eight. There are some distractions. That's it, last one. Take that right there. one, yeah. Yep. Follow the ridge. Is this Sean? Yeah, this is down at the sand dunes, obviously, uh, late afternoon. And I just love the way the, the ridge was still capturing the afternoon sun and everything you know, in the foreground. And inside that little curve area was darkened up. And as you pointed out, Trish, the, the footprints kind of following the ridge up, up the dune. Okay, thank you. And this is also mine, and I think I changed this name Except from the metadata, but- The Wanderer. Um, yeah, The Wanderer, the, the okay. quest for water. Uh, but yeah, this is at um, taking a moonscape overlook in the Badlands of Utah and this is down in the valley floor, and I just pictured, you know, with all these uh, tributaries and the dendritic drainage pattern, you know, what whatever creature was just wandering around the desert out there trying to find something to drink, and I just love the 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 haphazardness of it. Almost almost reminds me of a, if you recall those family circus cartoons when they would show the, one of the kids trail throughout the day. So 
I'm glad you enjoyed this yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, th this is uh, yeah, this is mine. This is Steve. Um, what attracted to me, uh, what attracted me was this. This is in a junkyard, obviously. Was the tire? It's, it's like a fresh new tire on this on this old junked uh, VW Bug. The second thing that attracted me was the fact that I used to own one of those uh, death traps. Thank you, Trish. Nice shot. Uh, this is, yeah, this is uh, also mine. Uh, I was just fascinated by playgrounds and um, I'm doing a little series on them, some with and without kids using some grandkids at any rate. Um, so I I'd crawl around kind of feel like, you know, what, what's it feel like to a little kid uh, who's faced with something like this. Um, and uh, I did a lot of work cleaning up those, <laughs> the stainless steel. There's a lot of little, um, uh, you know, erasing tiny little bits of marks and dusts and whatnot. So it was a lot of time put into it. Thanks again, Trish. Circular. This is Terry Hanford. Yeah, this was a uh, train wheel. Uh, it was at a uh, little park up in uh, Douglas, Wyoming. And I was just taken by how the light was hitting it. Uh, you know, it was one of those things where uh, very lucky just to catch it, just the light being as it was. Thank you. This is also Terry. Yeah, this is also on the side of a train. I, I have no idea what it was, but it, it, it just was a, a little patch in the middle of the uh, side of the car. And I'm sure it does something fancy, but I don't know what it is. But I, I was really taken by the simplicity of it and the depth of it. Excellent. Bolts and bands. That is Todd Lytle. Is Todd here? Um, he does have a comment, just Water Tower, Athens, Ohio, June 2020. Afterglow? Uh, yes, Terry. that was taken. We were in Florida. And that was taken uh, on the water as the sun was going down. And um, I, I did want it soft focus, but I appreciate your comment. And this is also Victoria. Also on the Highline Canal. Um, and uh, I did uh, work on blending in the background a little bit. I just wanted to blend in with the, that plant there, the weed, whatever it is. <laughs> Next one, Carl, or is that it? I think that is it. That's the end. Yeah, how about it? Hey, Trish, really want to thank you for this. Uh, I, I know the energy it takes, the effort that you, you put into it. We really appreciate it. I also want to make an offhand comment. We had 12 entries from between five, six, and eight, and six of them, half of them scored a nine or a 10. Uh, I think it's terrific. Actually, we had five tens in, the, in that group, five out of 12, that ain't bad. So um, as far as what's on my list, the uh, our September program meeting will be a New England Fall Color by Brenda Petrella. And beyond that, does anybody else have anything? Thank you, Trish, for uh, all the wonderful comments and all the great information. Love yeah, it. yeah. thanks, thanks, Carl, for, for pinch hitting there. And Trish, thanks sure. for your patience with us tonight, too. You appreciate appreciate all the great comments and, and constructive feedback on every image. Wonderful. We still finished by eight o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Trish. Thank you, Carl. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, guys. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.